Today on Dead Dodge Garage, Murray's 344 speed Cuda's banging gears once again. And it's pretty awesome. I am shocked and appalled. It's a metaphor! You ever put your hand in one of these? Oh, you're here too. That's bad. No one called the fire department. Everything's fine. What do you think about all this, Prudence? Mm -hmm. You always say that. drive videos seem to be a bit of a recurring theme on the channel lately so hopefully it's not getting too boring now I've already taken this car out for a bit of a shakedown run and I must say so far I think I did a good job I haven't heard any kachunka noises no gears grinding seems to be really good the only slight problem we have had is with the new clutch. The ratio between the pedal and the pressure plate just seems to be a little funky. Like all e-bodies, it seems to drive pretty well. It does seem to be a little bit of a wobble. I'm not totally sure what that is. We haven't been through the front end. This trip was all about making the clutch and the transmission work and trying to get the oil to stay in the engine. My coworker Evan did a pretty nice job on that. I'll show you in a minute. It's a beautiful day out today. Not a bad day to be driving around in a Cuda. Coming to a corner, this seems like a good chance to test the four speed, you know? Perfect synchro engagement. Seats 
don't recline, so that's kind of a problem. Woo! Good brakes on this unit. Charger. Someone in the comments is gonna say rip those off of there and put steelies and dog dishes on there And I understand I get it Someone else is gonna say rip those air shocks out of there. The stance is ridiculous In fact, they already did on the first video and I understand that too But I really like that day 2 70s muscular ridiculous look. I just think it's awesome Looks like a lot of trains come through here, so I'll keep an eye out. Here's a look at the freshened engine compartment. You can see the nice shiny new orange paint down there on the timing cover, water pump. You can see fresh hose clamps there. A lot of nice little detail work Evan did. There's the new radiator, which solved the no petcock issue, as well as the, it's kind of just a piece of crap problem. If this were a points meet, obviously we would lose a few for having the wrong air cleaner on there. And those bright blue, they say Mopar, but they're really Taylor spark plug wires. Also not my favorite, but hey, they work. This is not a hundred point concourse factory OE quality resto, but it's nice in here. I think this last visit improved it quite a bit. And again, my favorite thing about this car, it's a driver. Gills, so nifty. I even like it with no stripe and just gills on the side. This kind of sets it off, you know? the mud. There's a puddle right out in the middle of the driveway at Rocket and I think everybody, including myself, that took this thing for a test drive went ahead and hit that. I'm going to take it back to the North Pole now and shine it up a little bit. Knock all the mud off. Get it ready to go. And then I think I get to personally deliver this so that's pretty cool too. Now again, I can't really take credit for how awesome this car is. I didn't even really do the work but I can take credit for the four speed and believe you me, it's really great. Here's another look at the interior with the world's most annoying noise going in the background. Now I love these restored e-bodies as much as the next guy, but do we really have to restore them to the point that the key buzzer works? I've only just noticed the custom floor mats. That's a neat touch. Also my camera mount fell off. Another couple notes on this thing. I got to do the tune on it today. That Holly double pumper had the same little problem I've seen on many of them. The front squirter nozzle was a 28. On anything more than like, I don't know, maybe a stock 318, if you've got a 28 nozzle in the front, you're gonna have a bad time. My trick is always to throw that thing away and get a 31 fixed. There's a lot more tuning that can be done with the accelerator pump system by changing the cam here. I didn't have to do that on this one. Just the nozzle change was enough to make it much, much better. Whoever had timed this thing previously got a little excited. And it had something like 40 to 42 degrees of total timing. I backed that off to about 34 and it does seem to be much better. It still kind of wants to ping occasionally, but um, I'd say for now, probably good to go. Just got to make sure we keep premium fuel in it. If this were my car, I'd probably eliminate the vacuum advance and I'd definitely recurve the distributor, but it's not. 
And again, in this stock configuration with the timing back down to something reasonable, it does work pretty well. We're still not really sure what to think of the clutch adjustment issue. It's a factory replacement type clutch and well, the inch of free play setting that the factory specifies just didn't really work with this setup. I've got it to a point now that it does work and it doesn't make any horrible noises, so I think it's gonna be just fine. It's just strange. Modern parts. So that's it for our part on Murray's Cuda, at least for now, other than giving it a bath. I wanna thank the owner, Murray, for letting me do videos on this thing. I think you could probably tell I really, really like it. I have just decided I'm not gonna pick a favorite. I think I can just like them all. I'm still not entirely sure how tuning and test driving cars like this 344 speed could is a job, but they keep paying me, so I'll keep doing it. All right, you can have a little RPM for a treat. If I have a future in this whole detailing thing, but looks pretty good, if I do say so myself. Uh, important note, if you didn't catch this in the four-speed rebuild video, this car is from California and it has original floors. It is nowhere near as pieced together as I indicated in the original video. We were mixing this Cuda up with Murray's other Cuda.